I thought we had the right idea on who was killing college football because it doesn't feel the same. It's not what it used to be, but maybe we have the wrong culprit. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from America's number one Big 12 podcast, Locked On Big 12. Thank you for making this show your first listen every single day. I'm chasing the Savannah Bananas out in Mesa, Arizona. So there is an appropriate background behind me, and that is pretty much nothing. Bleak and bland, something that I believe embodies today's show. Not bleak necessarily, but informational. What I want to do is convey to you where college football is going, the trend it's been on, and how the viewing experience, me and you, our ability to watch the game and enjoy it, is being ruined. My first point, the SEC and the Big Ten are killing college football. We'll also talk to Florida AG suing the ACC, and that's going to effectively end the conference, and Washington State and Oregon State not coming to the Big 12 is given more evidence based on their revenue numbers. And we'll look at the revenue numbers of the rest of the conference over the last two decades. First, with the SEC and the Big 10, I have told you that ESPN and Fox are the ones killing the college sport. I do not believe that is entirely false. I am still of the mind that TV networks are what is destroying the thing that we love most. I am a college football guy. I like watching West Virginia and Iowa State. I like watching BYU play Oklahoma State. The rest of the country might point you outside of that direction, but I think it's great for the sport, and I think it grows the game overall. The SEC and the Big Ten don't want that. They want to play their own brand of football with their own Super League and Super Conference. The reason we know that is Greg Sankey has talked about how he doesn't feel obligated to play nice, to play with everyone else. And in college football playoff conversations, he asks for as much money as possible and will likely get even more money in 2027 when there is a look-in clause and we reevaluate how revenue is distributed. With that being said, while ESPN and Fox are certainly pulling strings here, they're the ones that are controlling the puppets. I'm not all convinced that Greg Sankey and the SEC puppet isn't alive itself, isn't a biotic thing, and that he is not helping steer the ship in a direction that has the SEC and the Big Ten separate from everybody else. We know There were talks, and Ross Dellinger has had some great reporting on this with Yahoo Sports. There were talks of the SEC and Big Ten getting more automatic bids than the Big 12 and the ACC and everybody else. Not only were there talks about a revenue differential that made the SEC and Big Ten twice as much money as the the ACC and and the Big 12, but those happened. The the money is is in in an insane disparity here, and there is something that that many listeners have mentioned over the course of this week that I want to go to. I don't typically utilize listener comments on this podcast to build out segments. And I don't know that I'm exactly doing that here, but for the first time, I want to lean on a rhetoric that is absolutely true. Brett Allen says, I've already stopped watching the SEC and Big Ten. Just watch what happens to their TV numbers and subsequent revenue in the future when they squeeze out 60% of the country. That's where I go. If Sankey, if Petiti, if the Big Ten, if the SEC want nothing to do with the rest of college football and you create a product that is exclusive at the top, it has 25 teams, 30 teams. Because look, if everything is reworked, Fox is not going to give a lot of TV value to a Northwestern, to a Purdue. They don't want to drag those teams into this thing. Even a Vanderbilt could be at risk. I'm not sure if a Mississippi State is valuable enough to be held off into a 20-team Super League. If Sankey truly wants to go big or go home and make things as profitable as possible, he's going to do that with a limited number of teams. The reason the SEC has not added 26 is the reason the SEC has not conjured away already for Florida State or Clemson to join. They are very picky with what they use because they want the most amount of money with the least amount of headache. And the way to do that is to target the TV companies. But what happens when this product of just SEC teams, of just Big Ten teams, when the Big 12 is off to the side, when the ACC doesn't exist, when everybody else in college football is left behind, what happens? I don't think we all keep watching. I don't think we can create a second NFL in college football. There's just 
not away. Smuggy Thornton. Yeah. Oh, buddy. There are multiple comments that I loved this week. Smuggy Thornton says, I'm a tiny piece of the big picture college fan. I am almost checking out. This guy says, when the Ohio State versus Georgia matchups become commonplace, the novelty will wear off and so will the ratings. The NFL has 32 teams. The NFL is a professional sports entity. College football is not. The reason you love college football is because of App State and Michigan. It is not because of Georgia, Alabama. Those games matter to the grand scheme of college football fans, sure, but the essence of what college football is, what amateur sports are, is the game that's played where there's an upset or something unexpected. So the reason we love March Madness is the parody. We don't watch March Madness to see the best two teams duke it out. We watch to see your big mighty squad get upset by St. Peter's. Everybody builds a bracket with upsets in it because that's what we're looking for. And in college football, it's the exact same way. When we become the more exclusive, the SEC and the Big Ten become the less people watch it. I truly believe that. I think we get to a point here where those two conferences say, uh, we're going to trim the fat that we already have. We're going to create our own little thing over here. We're going to play by ourselves. And it doesn't work out correctly. Now, I wouldn't make a UFL comparison or an XFL comparison, whatever they're calling that league, and say that you fall completely to the wayside as a sub to the NFL. No, Saturdays will still be packed with college football fans. But the day that Oklahoma State football doesn't matter anymore to the grand total of college athletes, they can't compete for national champions. That's what I'm trying to say. The day that those schools, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, BYU, Utah, cannot compete for a national championship – is the day that the SEC and the Big Ten shoot themselves in the foot and this doesn't work out the way they want it to. The, to me, the key, there's, if there is a solution that I can request that salvages the Big 12, that salvages even like an Oregon State, a Washington State, or an SMU, who I don't like, but we just want to, if we want to be nice to everybody, the way to do that is continue to expand the college football playoff. That is something that you as a viewer might not love. Like, oh, well, we had four and most of the time number one team won it anyway. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. I, I'll reason with you there. But that is the only way the expanded college football playoff is the only way to bring in more revenue to college football and keep the conferences and the teams that you love alive. That's what it seems like at this point, unless other crazy scenario that CBS reporter Dennis Dodd pitched as an idea is that Clemson and Florida state add the big 12. If you get the big 12 to 20 teams and there are, there's a, a backfill of ACC squads like a UNC, Florida state, Clemson, Miami. At that point, there are now three conferences and sure you've destroyed some of the ACC, but you're creating a like, right. We already had the power five and nobody complained about the other five, the group of five conferences. We never complained that they were a group of five. They just, they couldn't move up and play in our conference. We're exclusive. Now that you're seeing that with two leagues, that's when it's become a real problem. If you get it with three and the ACC goes away and the Big 12 becomes a juggernaut, I don't complain because I host Locked On Big 12. However, that's a scenario that I think is too far-fetched to happen. Therefore, you expand the college football playoff. You put revenue, money in everybody's pockets, and you keep things alive. Truly. As dour as it sounds, I believe because the actions of Greg Sankey in the SEC and the Big Ten, too, college football is on the verge of dying. As we know it, it is already dead. College football, as we know it, is already Oklahoma and Oklahoma State aren't playing anymore in the regular season. Texas and Texas Tech aren't playing anymore. Your version of college football that, you're, that you know and love, the last three decades of it, is gone. I just hope it doesn't die altogether. And I'm worried that's where we're headed. Coming up, the Florida AG now suing the ACC. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team, and it is every day. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I am uh, competitive. My friends don't like to hang out with me because I'm too competitive. And when someone breaks out a card game, I say, hey, that's stupid. I know I'm going to win. Why would we play this? Monopoly Go is where I can compete with my friends and win. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. A great twist on Monopoly where you play not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities and bringing you money. I can change, change, charge rent on my iconic properties to beat my friends. I can also heist their vaults and I am the biggest Monopoly tycoon. Download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. But even if you're not competitive, you can play with friends. Download Monopoly Go on the App Store or Google Play. Monopoly Go, I promise you, Monopoly Go is a good time. 
Today's show is also brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors, keep your ride or die alive. I had a plastic part of the bottom of my car that was dragging across the street a couple weeks ago. That happens a lot to me. My car falls apart sometimes. I love my Nissan Maxima, but things are never going perfectly with it. Thanks to the passion, drive, and patience of eBay Motors, I fixed that random plastic part because I went and I said, eBay Motors, what is this plastic part? It told me. It told me. And I got one. It was a guaranteed fit. They also have superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, everything for speed, power, and style. Keep your number one ride or die alive with 122 million parts. Go to ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Exclusions apply. An eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. That is ebaymotors.com with millions of parts for your MVP. The Florida Attorney General is suing the ACC as if things were not already messy enough on the East Coast. They're even worse now. And to me, this isn't the culmination of the conference's demise. That already happened. This is instead almost an after ripple effect that's going to determine how soon Florida State is in a different conference and honestly, how soon Clemson is in a different conference. This all per Yahoo Sports. Ashley Moody's office filed a suit against the conference in Leon County on Thursday. The suit seeks to make the text of the ACC's TV contract public as Florida State looks for ways to get out of the deal it signed with the ACC without paying a hefty fee. How about this, baby? The government's getting involved. The Attorney General of Florida said, hey, this was I, I love reading this article, by the way, from Yahoo Sports and Nick Bromberg that mentioned how in January, in January, the AG's office put in a request for the public records that has the TV contract. And they probably haven't got I guess they haven't gotten it. They are now still trying to get the ACC to admit what its TV deal is and how there is possible fraud from that conference and from Jim Phillips, the commissioner. Here's a direct quote from the AG's office. Documents are public records, even if prepared and maintained by a private organization, if they were received by agents of a public agency and used in connection with public business, the suit states. The term received in section 119.011 refers not only to a situation in which a public agent takes physical delivery of a document, but also to one in which a public agent examines a document residing remotely. Otherwise, a party could easily circumvent the public records laws. So in essence, we are wondering if the ACC has committed fraud. And I am over the moon with not necessarily the destruction of the ACC, but over the moon with the idea that the Big 12 can now swoop in and have a better shot at grabbing the Louisvilles that we've talked about, the, the different schools that are profitable here, and that the expedition of this process of Florida State and Clemson leaving likely means the expedition of the Big 12 growing. And even more so than all of that, this likely means settlement. When the AG is involved, Florida State, again, part of Yahoo Sports, is unhappy with the distribution that would like the ability to easily change conference without owing the ACC up to $500 million in exit penalties, even if its next conference is unclear at the moment. So they want out and they don't want to pay $500 million with the AG involved. I think what we are spiraling towards is a settlement. And when this is settled, we will, in essence, know a price tag if it's Florida State leaving the ACC for $150 million, if it's $100 million, if it's $200, $250, whatever that might be. Now you look over at NC State, you look over at North Carolina, you look over at Clemson and say, hey, we just settled for X amount of dollars. This opens the door for you to do the same. Here is the price tag that you have to raise to leave the league. As you know, the addition of Cal, Stanford, and SMU was something that the, the ACC was doing to backfill. We thought that their TV deal was through some odd 2036, and that backfill would make it to where ESPN couldn't rework that TV deal. But come to find out from some of the documents that have been unearthed out of this grant of rights by Florida State, in 2025, ESPN can decide altogether, we don't want the ACC's product anymore. We're cutting your contract after 2007. So there's about a nine-year gap where teams thought they had a TV contract and they didn't really. And the AG's goal here is to make that public, make those TV notes, that contract, public. And with that, oh, buddy, this is crazy. And with that, Florida State leaving the conference because ESPN has cut things off 
just means that the league itself can no longer exist. When your TV network says, hey, we're probably not going to do this past 2027, then you can't you can't exist anymore. I mean, SMU and Cal and Stanford are going to have to find another conference home after putting a Band-Aid on this situation for a couple of years. That is what we call in my industry not good for them, especially in SMU. That left its conference high and dry, took a chance paying a gajillion dollars just to move up, and it's not going to work out. So, in essence, ACC, the back end of the ACC, too, is Syracuse of Boston College. None of this is good. The AG suing the conference is not good because, again, it creates a much faster way for the league to die. And if you're at the top, if you're even a Louisville, if you're at NC State, you're looking for your next landing spot in Miami, and the Big 12 has open arms. I just, it blow it really, can we think about this? It blows my mind that everybody in the league thought, oh, we have a TV contract through 2036. And then finally, somebody reads the grant of rights that everyone's tied to. It's like, hey, uh, hey guys, we, we don't. ESPN can back out of this by 2027. And it looks like that's what they want to do. I can't imagine ESPN is going to pay up with Clemson and Florida State out of the league. And Clemson and Florida State are very quickly leaving the league. So there's your update out in the ACC. Big 12 expansion looks closer and closer, better and better as that league comes to a crumble. I don't know if any of us truly missed the ACC or the make it the Pac-12 because of how um, aggressive almost narcissistic. And I mean, there were so many PAC 12 fans and even their commissioner, George Klievkov, who were delusional over the course of that process. And it seems like the ACC based on what is probably fraud is also in that camp of, mm, I guess it sucks for college football traditionalists to not be able to see Clemson play North Carolina uh, or NC state, but Man, you kind of brought this one on yourself, and it makes me very thankful to have Brett Yormark as the commissioner of the Big 12 because the guy can do business. Coming up, Washington State and Oregon State get, did not get a Big 12 invite, uh, and now it's clear why. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is where I go to get tickets, especially last minute. I love to go to concerts. We have N Market Arena over here in Savannah, Georgia, where I live. And I go to N Market to watch concerts, but I buy tickets 30 minutes before the actual event. Game Time is authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball as well. So if you want to go to a game near you, high profile events, do it. Last minute deals, flash deals, zone deals. All in pricing. Toggling this feature shows the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkouts. You get a panoramic view from your seat. The lowest price is guaranteed, and you get ticket coverage. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. MLB concerts, theater. It's Game Time. Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, and that is guaranteed. We now have a more clear view of why Washington State and Oregon State didn't get the invite to the Big 12. And what it starts with is revenue numbers. This is per Jeff Fuller, who's done a great job of taking the EADA surveys over the last 20 years and putting together grand total athletic athletic revenue, showing that Kansas is pushing nearly two million billion, <clears throat> two billion dollars over the course of the last two decades. And they are number one in the Big 12. Let me read you the five most profitable schools, the schools with the best revenue over the course of those 20 years. Kansas at one, Oklahoma State two, TCU three. Arizona State, four, and Baylor, five. This, again, per the EADA website. That's ope.ed.gov, the literal U.S. government. EADA, per fuller, lists data for all schools, including private schools. And it's worth noting that some revenue is in the form of direct institutional support and or student fees for many schools. So now we've, we've established the five best teams, for like U.S. government, five Highest grossing revenue teams, Kansas, Oklahoma State, TCU, Arizona State, and Baylor. Let's see why Washington State and Oregon State didn't make it into the Big 12. That's says Oregon State is sitting at $1.2 billion over the course of the last 20 years. That is 61st nationally. And Washington State is at just over a billion, one billion and 80 million, which was dead last amongst all power five schools. 
Here's the really, really tough news to swallow if you're Oregon State and Washington State. Most of this, at least a portion of this, was based on timing. The Big 12 showed that it wanted to go out west with adding BYU, even Utah, Arizona, Arizona State. But Houston, Cincinnati, UCF in the last two decades, and I'll withhold UCF a bit there for obvious reason. Houston and Cincinnati, those two programs made less than a billion dollars over the last 20 years. Oregon State, I already told you, made $1.2 billion, almost $1.3. Washington State made $1 billion. Huh. Almost $1.1 billion. That is still a significant gap over Houston and Cincinnati. Those two programs would have likely been much more valuable. Now, I know they were in the Pac-12. You'd argue if Houston and Cincinnati had been Pac-12 teams or Power 5 teams, they would have made more money. And that case is true. But we know from a TV viewership standpoint, Washington State blows Houston and Cincinnati out of the water. Had all of this gone down a couple of years prior, before Houston and Cincinnati were here, there's a legitimate chance that Washington State and Oregon State are Big 12 teams because of what they have done, not just from a TV viewership standpoint, but also a revenue standpoint. Now, it's not good. I mean, Washington State's not good. That is last amongst Power 5 teams. That's not Adam, I mean, like, I don't need that, right? You're taking a chance on Cincinnati and Houston to build something up, but they're still significantly less. Again, in a Power 5 conference, those schools have made more money, and they're doing real well for being schools that aren't or weren't Power 5 for 20 years. But Washington State's viewership numbers and the way that Kirk Schultz, the university president, carried Oregon State along with the university and expansion talks shows there is, a again, a legitimate possibility. Had the timeline been different, that both of them would have gotten an invite to the Big 12. Instead, what Brett Yormark ended up doing was balking on those two, saying, hey, uh, go play your fun new league that you're going to build yourself. And kind of wild, too, that he said no to Gonzaga and UConn in the basketball-only format. And instead decided to focus on the ACC. Like that's what's next is further Big 12 expansion with schools that are profitable on the East Coast. I truly believe that is where Brett Gormark is taking his focus and adding Washington State and Oregon State when at the time being last summer when he could have didn't make sense enough. And those two schools were barred out of what they were guaranteed in college football playoff conversations about how the ACC, Pac-12, Big 12, anybody who goes defunct still has a leeway or grace period. That was, in essence, thrown out by the college football playoff committee. And both teams got a raw deal in the revenue numbers they could have gotten. That still wasn't enough. And none of that was enough to get them to the Big 12. I will mention, too. I told you Kansas one, Oklahoma State two, TCU three, Arizona State four. This is in revenue over the last 20 years. And Baylor at five. I'll give you the rest of the list. Six, Arizona. Seven, West Virginia. Eight, Colorado. That's your top eight most profitable, highest revenue gross teams over the last two decades. Then the back half, Kansas State at nine, Texas Tech 10, Iowa State 11, Utah. 12 again another school that spent some time in the group of five but tcu uh they were a group of five team there for a little bit they're third remember in athletic revenue so that's just a nugget to keep in your back pocket byu ucf houston and cincinnati make up the back end but again i think that kind of goes back to talking about how houston and cincinnati of course their numbers are less because they weren't a power five school but tcu wasn't a power five school either and they still not for the full 20 years and they still are sitting at 1.5 billion which is is third in the Big 12. They have done a whole lot of good no matter where they are over college football. And most of this revolves around college football, though Kansas being one in total athletic revenue has much to do with basketball. I can guarantee you that. So if you're an elite team, an elite, a Kansas type, they had 07 too in football. Uh, your numbers could be pretty beefy. So was that, you guys have fun? Overlooking a great, beautiful baseball park here in Mesa, Arizona. To the Grand Canyon this week. Isn't that nice? I had a lot of fun with it. I hope you had a good week, too. Come back tomorrow. <clears throat> I won't be here Saturday tomorrow. Come back on Monday. We'll talk more, uh, what do you say, Big 12? This has been, it always will be, not on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.